Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with 1 Chronicles chapter 28, starting in verse 2. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made preparations to build it. But God said to me, You shall not build a house for my name, because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. And I want to take this opportunity to say that people, non-Christians in particular, they love to take the Old Testament, take the God of the Old Testament and say, look at how incredibly different he is from the God of the New Testament, this bloody, vicious, warmongering God who just wants to kill people, beat them over the head for their sin, send them to hell, even though hell wasn't specifically mentioned in the Old Testament, but since it's in the New Testament, that's probably where he sent them. And so he's this evil, capricious deity who doesn't really give a crap about people. And while I could point out several examples where he's full of mercy and loving kindness um, and love, and that's been said many, many, many times, I found a different angle to approach it from, from this particular verse. And it has to do with the bloodshed and the war a lot. Now, there was nothing wrong with David killing Goliath with David conducting wars as the king of Israel, with defending Israel's territory, with um, broadening the scope of what Israelis, of Israelis, what Israel's border was. There was nothing wrong with those things. Now, when he killed Uriah the Hittite, yes, that was bad. That was wrong. That was murder. That was not killing in wartime. That was not defending his nation. That was not expanding his nation. That was just cold blood and murder to hide his sin. And that was most definitively wrong. But this verse is not referring to that murder of Uriah the Hittite um, and his stealing of Bathsheba, his wife, to be his own. This is in reference to him being a man of war. This is in reference to him killing Goliath, um, killing the 200 Philistines, presenting their foreskins to Saul expanding the territory of Israel, of defending Israel from the Philistines and from other varying nations. This is what that was about. God obviously is going to pass judgment on people who are in sin. We're all going to have our day in court where we stand before the maker of the universe and the maker of ourselves, and we'll have to give an account for everything we've said, done, and even thought. But this God, who understands the necessity of judgment and the necessity of consequences and penalties for wrong actions, he did not want this man of God, who was after his own heart. It says in another portion of the Bible that David was a man after God's own heart. Again, Google is your friend. Because he had to shed so much blood, because he was a man of war, God did not want him to build his temple. He, God wanted a man of peace, Solomon. And, it's, and it is said of Solomon in the Bible that God gave him peace on all sides. And David did quite a bit of subduing during his day. He pretty much got Israel squared away in a good, nice, secure, safe spot. So Solomon didn't have to conduct a bunch of war campaigns throughout his life to defend Israel or even to expand it. David did most of that work. He also did a lot of preparations for building the temple and getting the temple ready, getting just the raw materials and a lot of the workmen who would work on the temple ready for Solomon. That's covered later on in that same chapter. But God did not want a man of war who had shed a lot of blood to build that. Now Solomon shed some blood. He did put some people to death. He did command the um, death of certain people. Was, although that was more in a judicial sense. I'm not sure if he ever actually shed the blood himself. That I don't know. It's not actually recorded in the Bible if Solomon ever went to war or shed any blood on his own. He commanded some people to be killed near the beginning of his reign to solidify his reign over Israel. Not sure if he ever did it himself. I don't, but it's not recorded in the Bible that he did. He, uh, I remember he commanded uh, Benaiah to, um, to kill some people, but I don't think he did it himself. And God didn't want someone who shed a lot of blood to be the one who built his temple because God values peace. God values the sanctity of human life. He's the one who created the sanctity of human life by saying that man is created in the image of God. And if someone else sheds the blood of someone who is in the image of God by man, 
that man's blood shall be shed because he shed the blood of someone who's created in the image of God. In short, that's all in Genesis chapter 9. In short speak, a murderer should be put to death. Period. That, that was God's law. Um, a, after he put the rainbow in the sky, no, the Noahic covenant, if you kill someone, you deserve to die. That's the, that's the simple English version of it. But God didn't, even though that is just and right, and what David did is just and right, he didn't want a person who had done that to build his temple because God wanted his temple to be based on peace and no bloodshed. And I think that speaks volumes of who God is and the, the, the principles and the values that God holds. Yes, judgment is necessary. Yes, death is necessary at times, but that's not God's ideal, that's not his goal, that's not what he primarily wants. Something to think about. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.